Interesting question. Well, not really. By interesting, I mean I've heard it a million times before and I've given this advice a million times before. But the thumb isn't different either. It's just the title. Now, thanks so much for asking, though. Somebody said that when their girlfriend mysteriously left off in the middle of the night and I'm making them sound like Zorro, what I'm trying to say is that he was a member of Dumpsville, population him, and he didn't like that. And I can tell that he didn't like that. You know why? Because I'm psychic. Uh, obviously, most people are very happy when they get divorced, but this person wasn't. And <laughs> there was a problem with the way that he dealt with it that he is actually starting to navigate around and realizing, oh my God, it's kind of like my GPS is going in reverse. What does that mean? Well, you shut your mouth and I'll tell you. All right? Have you shut it? good probably drool all the time because you've got an iq of two that's why you're watching this show because it's very simple stuff that i'm saying today what i'm saying is some people when they get out of a relationship what happens is in their mind they panic because their entire beautiful world has been shattered like so many shards of glass and then they start stepping on it and it hurts and so what they do is build calluses on their feet that get stronger. He was saying, and I bet you know people like this if you aren't one like yourself. He was saying that once his girlfriend left him, he went into a world of pain and what happened next surprised even him. Buzzfeed headline, he started getting better at his life. He started going to the gym more. He was more focused. He was reading more books. He was doing everything that I'm always talking about, meditating. Got into this peak physical self and then got another girlfriend and then, oh, yep, yeah, getting out that dad bod. Oh, it's a tidal wave of fat and I've just had a baby and, oh, it's suffocated. Oh, well, I can always make another with me, missus. Yeah. That's what happens when you are in a relationship. It is very hard for a lot of people to stay motivated because, and there is two reasons for this, I'm going to go with the more profound one first. The reason that you were doing all of that, the reason that you say that your motivation laxed, if that's even the word, don't know if it is, let me know in the comments if it is. Like this video as well, stop being a cheapskate. Also sign up to the Jordan Chang channel. The reason that he was doing that is because all that extra work is because he wanted the puss. That was his motivation. And he is saying that he is no longer motivated. And the reason he's no longer motivated is because he's got nothing to aim for. Now that he's got one in the bag, gotcha. Some chick at a little bear trap at home being like, my leg. Ah! That's his ideal universe, apparently. That's what he wants out of life. Good on him. Whatever floats your boat. So, having no motivation, what's he do with the rest of his life? Just become a fat, lazy slob like most people do when they get into a relationship? Yes, and I'll tell you why that is most people's motivation. is because the, the most base motivation. If you are not at the level where you are suicidal, what do you want out of life? To reproduce so that you aren't genetically suicidal. That's it. So once that happens, if you have nothing else to live for, the, you, you become a butterball. You become a fat old meatball covered in butter. That's you. Fact. It is. It just That's just what happens in every element of your life. You just stop trying because what's the point? You're already number one, as the fat boy slim shirt says. It's a, you, as that fat blob, why try harder? That's the first reason. You need something else to motivate you. And the way that you are motivated in life is by wanting something. You clearly just don't want anything else. Every time you're in a motivational lull, you know why that is? For anything. This, let's just expand this out from not getting a girlfriend and then getting one. The other reason that you are not motivated is because you have nothing motivating you. It is very simple. You are not striving for anything anymore. So you have to find something that excites you, that ignites your passion, your soul, your very essence. It's just all ways of saying soul, isn't it? Yep, it is. That's what I want from you. That's why I'm always reinforcing that you should be having goals because goals at the very minimum, even if you aren't passionate about them, you start moving to them. And so you have to do something at the bare minimum. Even if you aren't trying to be the world's best driver, you think, mm, at least I want my license. Which brings me to my next point, actually. Which is that the other thing is, a lot of people 
when they are out of a relationship, what happens, and the reason that they start going to the gym, it's not just to attract another partner. There's also something else, and this is even more basic than this, it's just the pleasure pain principle. If you don't know what that is, you must write it down and you must figure out, and this is your homework for today. You paying attention? You better be fucking paying attention, otherwise I'll do this to your ears the next time I see you. And it'll slightly hurt. You don't want that, do you? No. So what you do is you write down pleasure pain principle and you figure out which one you're motivated by. I'll give you a hint. Fuckhead, most people are motivated by pain. Most people are motivated by not like losing their girlfriend as opposed to gaining a better one. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's usually used with money, but I suppose you could use it with women. Uh, so they don't go through life looking for attaining $10,000. They go through life looking for not to lose $10,000. And it's very easy to decipher this very quickly. People that are always talking about savings. I think if you are thinking about savings, and I think that I'm very blessed in the fact that I think that I'm much more motivated by pleasure. So uh, I think usually if you're good with money in terms of savings, yes, you will be better with money than somebody that doesn't care about money, and obviously you'll have more in the bank. But I think that it is better in life to be motivated by pleasure because what happens then is you link pleasure to gaining money. Jesus, we're getting really, really superficial here, aren't we? (laughs) But uh, yes, if you are motivated by gaining more money, you will just be richer because you have that outlook of like, money is infinite, I'm going to get it. Whereas if you are motivated by pain, what is very closely linked to pain? What is it? Answer me. Go on. You don't know, do you? Pathetic. I've said it so many times and it hasn't gone through your thick fucking head. (laughs) It it is that usually if you're motivated by pain, you are also trying to avoid scarcity. Now, these are all mindsets that start bundling into themselves and I think that they are this is obviously because I'm the other coin, so I'm sure that other people will just be like, you're an idiot and you're just like the grasshopper that's always going out and eating the walnuts when it's not winter. Maybe you are the squirrel, maybe, but the squirrel didn't have a good laugh, maybe. No, but also, I think that it's just, you know, if you assume that the world is abundant, the world is abundant, and so you see all these other opportunities in front of you and you always just think, look, there's no limit. There's no limit here. But if you are always thinking about a limit, what do you see everywhere that you go? Limits. So... When you lose your girlfriend, if you are avoiding pain throughout your entire life, that's when you kick in emotion. That's when you think, no, I'm better than that. And then you prove to yourself that you're better than that. That's when the motivation kicks in. But if you are in a world of abundance, you think, okay, I've got my girlfriend. What do I do next? Oh, of course, Russian harem. Yes, obviously. (laughs) You know, but like, you know, you just keep moving to the next thing. You keep thinking about, okay, that's now I've got that. I can move on to the next thing. I can swing from that branch to that branch. And so in that, you see yourself when you're not going to the gym, when you are in a girl with a girlfriend, it doesn't matter to you because you're thinking, no, my body can get better than what it is. I can be more functional than what I am now because it is coming from that abundance mindset. It is coming from that pleasure mindset. You are always thinking about how to gain and also people are going to be attracted around someone where there's always momentum being built behind them as opposed to being around somebody who is a little prude that is always trying to stop themselves from having too much fun, trying to preserve the fun, trying to preserve as much money as they can, trying to preserve as much attention as they can, you know? So this is the whole problem with it. These people, once they get this bare minimum, they start thinking, I'm satisfied. And then they stop pushing forward in life. I think that that is another fundamental thing that you need to change in your mindset. And if you haven't written it down, please write it down now. Abundance versus scarcity mindset. Which of those two do you have? I want you to answer these two questions for today. You need to answer if you have, if you if you are aiming for pleasure or pain in life and you also need to answer if you are aiming for abundance or scarcity in life and that will stop the basic motivation problem the, but the even more fundamental motivation problem than that is obviously you had nothing to aim for in life because it doesn't matter if you're motivated by pain and it doesn't matter if you're motivated by scarcity 
if you want something but you don't have it, that is still a driving force that moves you towards it. You like that? Good. Make sure that you sign up to Jordan Shanks because when you are signed up to Jordan Shanks, you are making, and I kid you not, this is coming from a non-biased source, guys, the most incredible investment you possibly can for five bucks or two bucks, whatever one you want to put in. It's so low, but the amount that you get back in return is apparent. It is so apparent with so many success stories that I have of people coming up to me all the time and saying, you know, when I started listening to your thing, I was a wretch. I hadn't gotten laid. Now I get laid all the time or I wanted a girlfriend or whatever their goals in life were. They have obtained it because there are simple things that you need to be reminded of over and over again. And in day-to-day life, you do forget those things and you do fall behind them. And I remind you of them every week as well as giving you very insightful little twinket things of like, eh, and you change that and, oh, okay, all of a sudden making a million dollars a year. Fact. People make a million dollars a year as a result of my channel. Anyway, I'll see you around.